you like teddy bears? They're a traditional and timeless toy, but what inspired their creation? Author James Sage knows, and he tells us in his book, Teddy, the remarkable tale of a president, a cartoonist, a toy maker, and a bear. Let's read. Theodore Roosevelt, or TR to his friends, was once president of the United States. When he wasn't too busy running the country, he liked to ride horses, wrestle, read, lift weights, write books, sail boats, play football, give speeches, go camping, go hunting, but not all at the same time. One year, his presidential duties took him south to the state of Mississippi. Between arranging treaties and other such things, he went hunting. His hosts had hoped he might bag a bear or two. But word that TR was coming must have spread quickly, for soon there wasn't a bear to be seen for miles around. Except that is for one scruffy, no account cub. Me shoot that little fella, said the president. Why, if I so much as reveled his fur, I'd never be able to look my children in the eyes again. So he put away his gun and returned to Washington and his home in the White House. And that was the end of that. Except that it wasn't. For in another part of the city, in the very busy offices of its most important newspaper, the staff cartoonist Mr. Clifford Berryman was being visited by his editor-in-chief. Clifford, I want something different, something that touches the heart, something that speaks to everyone. Have your cartoon on my desk first thing in the morning without fail. Yes, sir. No problem at all, sir. Without fail, sir. Yet, there was a problem. A very big problem. He couldn't think of anything to draw. I have an idea, said Harry, the coffee boy, who was always hanging around the newsroom. He told Mr. Berryman about the president and the cub. The story had just come in over the newswire. That's the ticket, said Mr. Berryman with a smile of relief. Young man, you saved the day. Here, have a donut on me. He drew all night, and as the sun rose over the waking city, he put the finishing touches to his cartoon. Excellent, excellent, said his editor-in-chief between puffs on his cigar. I've got to hand it to you, Clifford. You sure know how to draw bears. Yes, sirree. That's one cuddly bear cub, all right. Others thought so too. The cartoon was reprinted in newspaper after newspaper in every town and city in the land, including Brooklyn, New York, where a Mr. and Miss Mitchum had a little shop. They sold newspapers and candy, novelties and stationery, and even sometimes Miss Mitchum's handmade toys. Rosie, Rosie, take a look at this. The President of the United States refusing to shoot a little bear cub. Can you beat that? He should be so lucky, Maurice. Not every bear gets to meet the President. But such a President, Rosie. We must let everyone know what a big warm heart he has. Without saying more, Miss Mitchum took a piece of scrap material from the bottom of her sewing basket and began to snip the outlines of a little bear. She gave it a pointed snout, snip, stitch, snip, and two rounded little ears, snip, stitch, snip, and a pair of arms and legs, snip, stitch, snip, and large oval paws, snip, stitch, snip, and an ample belly, snip, stitch, snip, and last, but certainly not least, a nice firm bottom, just right for sitting. Snip, stitch, snip. Then she stitched it all together and stuffed it carefully with fine wood shavings, the same she used for all her toys. What will you do for eyes, my dear? Asked Mr. Mitchum, who had been watching her with interest. Your black shoe buttons will do nicely, Morris. I'll get you new ones tomorrow. And don't forget the nose, added Mr. Mitchum. A bear's not a bear without his sniffly snout. But Miss Mitchum had thought of that too. 
She chose some strong darning thread from her sewing basket and stitched on a little black nose. There now, she said, holding up the bear for inspection. What do you think? Mr. Mitchum was delighted. We'll put it in the shop window, Rosie, near the front for all to see. And we'll add a sign too. But just then, Mr. Mitchum thought of something else. Something very important. Perhaps we better ask permission to use the president's name in advertising our bear, my dear. After all, Teddy Roosevelt is president of the United States. So Mr. Mitchum hauled a stool over to the counter, sat down, and wrote the president of the United States a letter. When the president received it, he stopped whatever he was doing at that moment which was no doubt quite important, and dashed off a reply. White House, Washington. Dear Mr. Mitchum, while I don't expect my name will do much good in selling bears, you are welcome to use it as you have indicated. It is a bully idea. Sincerely yours, Theodore Roosevelt, President. P.S. Written in haste. Only in America, said Mr. Mitchum, beaming proudly. And on White House stationery yet, said Miss Mitchum. It wasn't long before it seemed everyone in America wanted to own a teddy bear, for the name had stuck. There were teddy bears dressed as cowboys, bellhops, train conductors, undersea divers, clowns, cricketers, fox hunters, and schoolboys. There were Boy Scouts, hospital patients, chefs, mechanics, soldiers, sailors, and aviators. There were teddy bears made of burlap, calico, velvet, flannel, mohair, wool, and alpaca. There were brown teddy bears, black teddy bears, auburn teddy bears, white teddy bears, golden teddy bears, and even a red teddy bear ordered by a Russian Grand Duke for his daughter, Princess Zinnia. And to go with all these teddy bears, there were teddy bear wardrobes, teddy bear steamer trunks, teddy bear tea sets, teddy bear books, teddy bear songs, teddy bear games, and of course, plenty of teddy bear picnic baskets. The world was filling up with teddy bears, and still there was a demand for more. Mr. and Miss Mitchum were so overwhelmed with orders, they had to close their little corner shop and build a big factory, a really big factory, entirely devoted to the making of teddy bears, which they called the Ideal Novelty and Toy Company. From its vast assembly lines, teddy bears tumbled forth 24 hours a day, week after week after week, hundreds and thousands and millions of teddy bears of every description, size, and shape. Yet, as different as they all were, even the ones that were supposed to be exactly the same, they all had one thing in common. You know, Rosie, said Mr. Mitchum, I think the reason kids love teddy bears so much is that they're so darn cuddly. Oh no, my dear, said Miss Mitchum. It's because teddy bears give cuddles in return. And there wasn't anyone anywhere who could possibly disagree. Not even the president. Thank you for reading with me. Be sure to check out your local library or bookstore to read the additional back matter that is in this book. But thank you for joining me. Happy reading.